just so weird having a car that's so cool and so desirable in so many ways but just doesn't seem to work. Hello guys, or maybe that should be dudes, and welcome back to the Volks with a channel. Welcome to review one of the most hotly anticipated Volkswagens of all time. The 21st century all-electric take on the Volkswagen campervan, the IED Buzz. Now this car's been out for the best part of a year. I've not been in a real rush to drive it because I'm not a big fan of electric vehicles. And to me, it looked like a money-making venture for Volkswagen, which I know all cars are but the price just seemed to be disproportionate to what you were getting. And I felt they were just trying to cash in on all the hype from people that just like the current trendy thing. So today we're gonna to find out if there actually is more to it than just a bit of a trinket. Okay, let's start off then with some vital stats. And this is an ID Buzz style model which sits above the life model in the range this one's got the 77 kilowatt hour battery a range of 255 miles and it will charge to 80 percent of that in half an hour apparently which is pretty impressive 204 horsepower 310 newton meters of torque it will do 0 to 60 in 10.2 seconds so yeah it's not rapid even for an electric car and it will do 90 miles an hour um flat out right yeah i suppose it does literally have the aerodynamics of a brick and it weighs like a lot of bricks it weighs two and a half tons so yeah if you want more range don't buy the id burrs because that battery sits in the cooper and the id3 and being lighter and more direct they'll go further on that charge there's quite a lot of standard equipment on this car like heated seats and yeah loads of stuff we've got some wood trim on the dashboard which i'll show you in a minute we've got some 20 inch wheels we have and how much is this car then well this car as tested is 68,255 of your pounds that's that's quite a lot of money um, it's candy white and bay leaf green that's a, a three grand extra and it's got an infotainment package plus of about one and a half thousand pounds and a charge and a Mo2 charging cable, which is £190. So not massive load of options, so base price is going to be roughly around the £63,000 mark. Yeah. Hmm. OK, yeah. Today is a driving day where you can drive anything, but you only have a short period of time. So if you want more information on this car, I'll put a link in the description of the video to the Volkswagen website right now. Let's have a look at the outside and the inside of the ID Buzz. Okay, I have to admit, Volkswagen have smashed it out of the park when it comes to the design. It is basically, for me, a, a modern version of the camper van. The two-tone paint is nice. I don't think it's as essential on this as it is on the multivan, which otherwise looks like a van. The single colour versions of this actually look all right, but if you can justify the extra, then yeah, go for it. There's not an awful lot to say, really. The eyes are pretty, you know, it's got a little face, hasn't it? It's quite cute. Um, yeah, the wheels are not particularly exciting. Got white Volkswagen badges, that's quite unusual. Got these details down here, which do give it the unique look, really. In front of that, you could be looking at a multivan, really. But at the back here, it's distinctly different. The back looks a lot more modern than even the multivan, which is a relatively new model yeah size wise well you know what once you get used to the size of an id3 and an id4 uh, it doesn't actually look that much bigger but it is let's just have a look in here so there's one i think one charging port it's on the driver's side rear let's now have a look inside so unfortunately like id3 we've got a lot of white going on here we've got the same shifter thing here um dark carpets and a lot more um, feeling of quality really than ID3. We've got this wood here which unfortunately is plastic you expect it to feel rough but it's smooth but it does look quite nice. Um, yeah basically Candine for your dashboard. This is all ID3 which I'm not a big fan of. Mm. Yeah, 
there are lots of little details which is the PR people have, have advised me but do they actually mean an awful lot? I hate to be boring but having a map of the world on there doesn't really make the car that much better and there's apparently a picture of an umbrella by the wipe I don't know can you see that it's really hard for me to see and I'm here it's all a recycled interior and the car is carbon neutral up until delivery so that's I think the first for Volkswagen obviously there's loads and loads of room there's no point in me getting in here to really show you because it's great if you want space for a family I can see the appeal of this car but £70,000 mm, maybe I'd want something I don't know different but yeah this is the latest trendy thing and for quite a long time it will have a lot of appeal to a lot of people maybe not me though camera there so this is an extra feature of the boots I think you pay more for this and it raises the boot floor up but the beauty of it is when you fold the seats down you get a flat floor that makes it 2200 litres which is humongous but basically like a van I guess without the seats going down it's 1100 litres which is still good if you take it all out obviously there'll be even more room you get these little things that are just bits of plastic with velcro but they're really clever if you want to like create um, a frame on the carpet to stop things moving around which is really annoying and that's what you use there are actually no luggage neck tether points little picture of the buzz there and there and that's like an armrest so presumably there's a seven seater version i'm no expert on these power tailgate always nice okay volkswagen i kind of get it and it's quite cool but will it stand the test of time i don't know anyway let's just go now and see how it drives there is a lot to like about these electric cars and ease of use is one of them so don't even have to turn the car on put your foot on the brake select drive and it's clever enough, clever enough to know we're going to go that chime there was to tell us it's ready and off we go it's a very spacious cabin we don't have a pan roof We've got the lovely button-free um, infotainment system. I know you guys all uh, <coughs> love. And it's a weird thing because it's like the a really desirable car, but then it comes with this infotainment system that everybody hates. And it's an electric car, which really doesn't seem to have been adopted by the public as something they want to buy. You know, it's just a bit weird I gather there's not an awful lot of premium on these on the used market I could be wrong but I know somebody who bought one and he got rid of it really quickly when they were still just the first few were still coming through from the factory so yeah it's a weird mix of like this really culty car and then two things that really people aren't that big a fan of but I don't mind the infotainment system and I think electric cars have their place wow this feels like a big heavy car. Now I know you do not need to tell me in the comments this is not the context in which these cars will be owned. But for me it's just a quick and easy way of getting a feel for it. I'm not even going to be pushing the 55 mile an hour limit. The brakes feel really weird really just because we've got this electric regen going on. Uh, I think if we, if we twist that we get a bit more regen. I like driving cars with full regen, it's just a very efficient way of doing it. It's basically one pedal driving, come off the throttle. Apart from when you're driving on this course, you don't really have to use the brakes. Yeah, okay, it's quite a steep hill. It's two and a half turns and it does get up here quite well. It's going to take a big chunk out of your range though. So if you're driving in the Alps, you better hope there's a charger at the top of the Stelvio. I did actually see a Swiss registered ID bus with two bikes on the back, obviously on the tour, and it had come from, it was in Scotland, it had come from Switzerland, yeah, all that way. So people do use them. I do not know how long it took to get to Scotland. Yeah, I mean, you know, again, 
there's no real situation where I'd be driving a two and a half ton vehicle apart from if I was moving house and this does drive you know well for a two and a half ton vehicle the steering though is totally glassy there's no feedback and in fact this car does make the Cupra born feel like a hot hatch <laughs> take that as you will rear wheel drive by the way so the electronics will control about something we ain't going to take off on this, are we? Let's face it. Whoa, hey! Whoa. And then to this corner. Yeah, there's a big price to pay for this car's cool looks when it comes to dynamics. There's no two ways about it. I think two and a half tons is really pushing it when it comes to such a small battery capacity and it's such a usable car you'll want to use it and that you don't want to use it and have to charge that often and if you're going into the mountains you're going into the wild to do the camping thing where are you going to charge Anyway, I'll leave you to ponder that point while we go on to the high-speed bowl. I'm running a little bit late, am I? Now I've got four minutes to do 100 miles an hour. there's going to be some wind noise because it's quite a big bulky car to push through the air and even at 65 miles an hour you can feel the resistance 17 so this is where you'd be cruising at the motorway no engine noise of course all tire and winds probably mainly wind because we've got such a big windscreen okay let's pop into this lane and go a little bit faster i got my foot to the board in an ID buzz now it's actually getting exciting, come on, 90, 91, 92. What is the range doing? It's 148 miles now. anybody's ever going to be able to do really even in Germany it's very hard to go much faster than that these days um, but there is a price and that is the impact on the range so that was dropping pretty quickly we were doing one and a half miles a minute it was going down much quicker than sort of 30 seconds for the miles so yeah if you're a steady driver and you want a cool spacious if a little bit pricey car then go for it and if you don't go very far and if you charge at home then I can see the appeal but it's just so weird having a car that's so cool and so desirable in so many ways but just doesn't seem to work how I'd want it to work as ever guys thanks for watching this Volks Wizard video keep subscribing keep commenting and uh, let me know what you think about the ID Buzz because it's such an important car for Volkswagen. I really want to hear your feedback on this car more than anything. And I'll see you for the next one very soon.